Good afternoon, good afternoon, you wonderful beloved people out there. This is the ambassador coming to you again. So this is a very beautiful Sunday afternoon and I have just come from attending church. Yes, we do have to stay at least six feet away from each other, but there's nothing like the joy of the Lord. So our subject today, and please subscribe, please subscribe. I would like to go live someday, but um, hit that like button as well. So, but we have a very serious uh, subject today, and that subject is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Acts 2 and 4 says that they were all gathered together on one accord, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke in tongue as the Spirit gave utterance. So a lot of people don't even understand it. Uh, the, the tongue speaking is the evidence that you have been filled with God's Holy Spirit. And trust me, we all need his Holy Spirit. Because with the Holy Spirit comes love. You have love for mankind, joy in your heart, no matter what is going on. The Holy Spirit will give you joy in the time of trouble. He will give you peace in the time of trouble. So love, joy, peace. You will be long suffering and your children won't so much get on your nerves because you are a long suffering person and the person of patience because patience is one of the very, very important things of being a woman or man or child of God. You need that patience, people. You need the patience because you're going to suffer some tribulations. Yes, all those who love the Lord will suffer some persecution, but with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to go through it just like a water rolling off a duck's back. Yes, people, there's nothing like it that comes to give you power to live right. It's awfully hard to live as God would tell us to live. Uh, be ye holy for I am holy. It would be awfully hard without it. But I'm not saying that people aren't saved because they don't have it. I'm saying that it is something that is necessary and you need to strive for it and to seek God for that baptism because it comes to give you power. It comes to comfort you, give you love, joy, peace, long suffering, uh, gentleness, meekness. And we cannot come before God and live a godly life without being a meek and humble person. There's just no way that we can do that uh, without being meek and humble because the Lord Jesus Christ was meek and humble. So at times, you know, uh, he might have gotten a little upset, especially in the temple when they were changing money in the temple. Well, that's a good reason. But let me tell you people, there's nothing like the love of God in your heart. There's nothing like God living in you with power and strength and confidence. You have confidence when you have God. You have a lot of confidence. You don't have to go around carrying a pistol and a uh, rifle and an M16 or whatever you call them. You don't got to do that. You know why? Because you're perfectly, perfectly confident in Jesus Christ and the God that we serve, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, people. Now, I'm just saying that it is hard. It's hard to live a good, uh, holy life without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And what comes also with it is teaching. The Holy Spirit teaches you. 
You can, it gives you revelation, uh, discernment. There's gifts that come with it. And that's the gift of teaching, discernment, um, the gift of evangelism, the gift of prophecy. All these gifts, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, these are the gifts that come with the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people today say there is no such thing. And because they haven't experienced it and because they don't believe in it, it doesn't happen for them, and they really don't want it to happen. But if you are really a true believer of God and Jesus Christ as His, as our Savior, then you're going to want everything uh, that Christ has for us because he said, I go away, but I will send you the comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Ghost. So that comforter comes to comfort you when you don't feel well it comes to heal you you have healing power with the with the baptism of the holy ghost you have healing power that holy spirit will heal you with scriptures you can quote healing scriptures every day half the day all day as much as you want and most likely than not you will be healed so why do we get through these things, uh, different uh, sicknesses all along the way in life? How do we get through those? Is that not God healing us? Is that not God who made us in the first place and he knows everything about us and everything that we need? And one of the things we need is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which will make your life a whole lot more simpler. It's only God coming to live in you. That's what it is. Giving you confidence and power. Oh, yeah. So, people, that is uh, the gift that God has given us. One of the gifts, one of the first gifts is that uh, he brought us out of sin and deg degradation. Uh, he saved us. We don't want to live the other way anymore. We have the desire to honor Christ because what comes with Christ? A lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. So anyone who does not have Christ in their life is really living beneath their privilege. Oh, yeah. You're living beneath your privilege if you don't have God in your life. And there's only two things. There's God and there's Satan. And there's no in-between, people. Don't be fooled. There's no purgatory in between. If you're either going to die to Christ or you're going to die to the grave and separated from God forever. Nobody wants to be separated from God because if the Holy Spirit wasn't on the earth today, it would be a whole lot worse than it is right now. Way worse. We wouldn't be able to tolerate it if the Holy Spirit was not flowing on the earth and in the earth today. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps people from going out and doing bad things. And... Uh, when you reject God, you reject the Holy Spirit, you reject Christ as your Savior, who did die for you on the cross. He loved us so much that that's what he did. And what kind of love is that? That's agape love. Unconditional love. He loves us no matter what, but he does not love sin. And he will not tolerate sin. And the scripture says that a liar will not tarry in his sight. Meaning liars will not see God as they want to see God, only in the judgment. Yes, people, we're going to be judged for everything we say, everything we do. Because only what we do for Christ will last. And if you would read your Bible, 
you would know that. You would know what the Bible says. And when you don't know what the Bible says, there's no way you can uh, honor and uh, obey Christ. Because you don't know what he is saying. People, we need God. These are some perilous times we're living in. And the scriptures say that these kinds of times were coming. And right now, we are in the birth pains. Not that far from the tribulation. So you want to know what is the seven-year tribulation? And yes, it is seven years not three and a half. The last three and a half is the great tribulation. The first three and a half years, the Antichrist will fool everyone into believing that he is God. But the last three and a half years, he's going to rain terror on the earth and to the people. We need God. I mean, he is a sovereign God. He made the world. And it, somebody going to come along and tell you, that there was a big boom. I mean, common sense will tell you that is not true. Just look around you at the at the seas and the oceans and the blue skies and the clouds and the green grass and the green trees and everything, the animals, everything on the earth was not a big boom. There is an originator to all of this, and we know it is God. And because he's taken so long to come, we think, is because he wants everybody to be saved. He's giving all of us a chance to accept him. Because once it goes down, there is no way we can come to God anymore. We have to live our lives for Christ and we have to die in Christ. We can't just go around saying, oh, uh, I, I'm going to hell and I'm going to have a big party. I mean, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. People, the devil ain't playing with you. He wants to take your soul to hell with him. And it's only a war. It's a war between God and the devil. And the devil wants to win. He wants to take as many people to the burning hell fire with him as much as possible because he wanted to be God. He wants to be like God. He, he, and then he wants to be God. That's why he's going to go in the temple in Jerusalem in the last days at, during the tribulation and claim to be God. And many people will be fooled. Why? Because you don't have the spirit of God. You can't discern between the spirits. Discernment is something that is very necessary to live a good life in order not to fall into traps. People, we need the Lord. And everything that is going on now is really a move of God. God is tired of sin and filth and murder and he's tired of it. He made everyone. He made everyone, people. And he loves everyone, but he will not tolerate sin in a person's life because he's too holy. He can't tolerate sin. So what we do is we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior. And then we are washed in the blood of Christ. He shed his blood for us. And so what do, we, what do we, he said, you know what, I go away, but I'll send you the comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit that will come and dwell in you and give you that strength, power, confidence, everything you need will come through the Holy Spirit. And so many people want to reject the Holy Spirit. They want to reject it. Oh, that's not true. Oh, no, um, there's no uh, such a thing. You know why they say that? Because they want to continue doing what they're doing. They don't really want to be held accountable for the things that they're doing. So they don't want the power to live right. The power, that's what it is. The Holy Ghost is power that comes to indwell us. 
there are so many things that's going on on the earth. There's evangelists who get on those airplanes and fly all over the world. I couldn't do that. You have to have a certain anointing to do that. They get in hotels and, and then the next day they're somewhere else and then they're here to doing a revival and then they're over here doing this and that. They're on their planes. And yes, they do need a private plane because nobody can tolerate uh, the schedule that a lot of these great men of God, these evangelists, have uh, their schedule to, to go by. The airlines, the uh, commercial airlines, can't keep up with their schedule. They will be stuck somewhere all the time. So yes, people, the blood of Jesus covers us and we are the people of God. And I don't care what you say, people want class. I'm the upper class, I'm a middle class, I'm a poor class. Oh no, oh no, we are all in one class when it comes to God. We are all sinners saved by grace. We are, it's the gift of God that saves us. It's his gift to us. And then we want to go around and ignore it and live any kind of way we want to live. Say any kind of thing we want to say and do any kind of thing we want to do. Oh, no. Everybody has to be held accountable to someone. Now, when you come into this earth, you are going to be accountable to your parents. Yes. And your parents will be held accountable from God. But when you are grown, you're going to be held accountable also by God. Because you are past the age uh, that... Um, gives you leniency but when you become an adult you have to honor god you have first you honor your parents yeah but then when you get grown you have to honor god and if you don't your life will be almost hell on earth because when god gives you something it's real and there's so much going on on the earth today people can't stay together why? Because of the devil roaming to and fro in the earth, seeing whom he may devour. This is no joke, people. It's no play thing. You're either going to spend eternity in heaven with God, the thousand year reign here on the earth first, or you're going to be held captive with Satan until the judgment. And there's going to be a thousand year reign. With Christ and his his uh, anointed people, his people of the people of God are going to reign a thousand years with Christ on the earth. And those people who are not going to be with Christ are going to be held somewhere captive for 1,000 years. And then after that, the judgment. So be careful. You have family. You want them to be saved. You want to be saved. This is no joke, people. Stop playing with God because he does not tolerate it. And he does not tolerate sin. So the people that think they can continue to do whatever they want, never being held accountable, that's not how the world works. It doesn't work that way. So people, say that, evangelists. Say that. Yes, ambassador. Say that to the people. Because I'm telling you, God loves all of us. And when we mistreat other races and mistreat other people, you're really going against God because that's not what he told us to do. He said to love one another. What is the second commandment? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
And everybody that is not yourself or your family is your neighbor. Everyone is your neighbor. And then you think that you can get away with it. It's not going to happen, people. You're not going to get away with it. If you would read your Bible, and especially people need to be studying the book of uh, Revelation right now, and I do mean you really got to study to get it. And the Bible also says whoever reads the book of Revelation will be blessed. Because why? Because they're going to know what thus saith the Lord. They're going to know. But if you don't want to read it, you're not going to know anything. We are not our own God's people. We have a God who created us. One who loves us more and more than anything. Yes, God is love. He is not filled with hate. And some people want to say, well, um, he hated Esau. No, he did not hate Esau. He hated what Esau did. He sold his birthright. And the oldest always has a birthright. And Esau decided to sell his birthright for a bowl of stew. Or something to that effect. The firstborn has a birthright. So, people, we need the Lord. We need the Lord because look what is happening on the earth. And this has been happening a while now. Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, volcanoes. Everything, wildfires all over the world, flooding all over the world, coronavirus all over the world. God is trying to get our attention. And this is a, one of the ways he's getting our attention. But then we choose to ignore that God is trying to get our attention. And we just go about our happy business. And the first commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. We love the Lord with everything that we have. We love the Lord with our money. We love the Lord with our time. We love the Lord with ministry, winning souls. With everything that we have, we have a van. We pick up people to take them here and there. We have a big home. We let people come and stay, making sure that, you know, they're safe enough to come and stay in your home. We have to love God with everything we have. And if we don't ever give any money to the ministries, I'm sure there's some ministry out there that you can uh, agree with that you would like to uh, advance the kingdom in that way. You can't just go through life and never helping to advance the kingdom of God. It's not acceptable. You have to do things that advance the kingdom. And the scripture goes, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant as he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. So God swore unto our fathers that he would give us wealth if we used it to help establish his covenant. And nothing is more satisfying than giving. Receiving is okay, but giving brings joy to the heart. You can't just go out, work for 30, 40 years, keeping everything in the bank, 
never helping anyone, just your own little family. You never thought about helping advance the kingdom of God. You never thought about helping the hungry or the poor or the sick. You never thought about doing those things because this is my home. This is, I bought this car with the hard earned money that I make. No, you didn't do it by yourself. God gave you the strength and the health to do it. And he gave you the mind to do it. Because if God doesn't give you a mind, you won't even work. God has given you a mind to accomplish what you have accomplished. But then again, you don't want to share it with anyone. We cannot take it with us. If I had $20 million when it was my time to go, I would have to give that money away to help the hungry and the poor. I couldn't just leave it just for maybe just my family. I got to help somebody else because it was God who gave me the power to help others. There's so much that people don't know, don't understand, but you have to read the word of God. You have to accept the Lord as your personal savior. If you want to live a peaceful life, because the Lord said, I come to give you love, joy, and peace. Do you have love, joy, and peace in your life today? Well, that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Nobody could do what a lot of these people do. They travel all over the world. You have to have a certain anointing to do that. You can't do that in your own strength. And see, that's what people don't understand when these people are everywhere preaching and teaching, uh, running revivals and different things like that. They don't understand that these people are anointed to do that. You can't do that in your own power. You can't. So we have a lot of things going on on the planet today. And we should stay in prayer and pray for our loved ones and all those who are sick and pray that this thing will go away. Yes, let's pray that this virus will leave us alone. So, I think that's about all I have to say, and I hope you have taken it to heart. Um, please subscribe, hit the like button, and this is the, the ambassador saying to you, peace, love, I love you all, God bless you, and I'll see you.